Well, where exactly do I start with something like this? I know I'm late making this video, but because I had my uh, leg, which was uh, really hurting these last couple of days as it's still bruised and can't do too much uh, hiking or biking or any kind of walking endurances. So uh, expect some delays on videos here and there, but not too much. So yeah, um, to start it, to kick off this video, with the big race of every year, even bigger, slightly bigger than the Daytona 500, Indy 500. Definitely not the best uh, Indy 500 I've ever seen, but it wasn't bad either. Definitely not 2013-like uh, level of awesomeness, but it was still uh, fun. To, it was still okay. It was still pretty fun to watch. Sometimes a little bit too uh, nerve-wracking. Too, with all those huge single car wrecks. Hmm. What else to say? It was it was essentially a uh, largely dom dominated by Scott Dixon as he led fifty percent of the laps, and pretty much one of his only uh, contenders was uh, Alexander Rossi, as he has been the uh, breakout of this uh, series since uh, 2016 when he won the Indy 500 in only his rookie season in I believe it was 2016 that he won until of course that he became a victim of a single car wreck later in the race so rip for him and of course uh, James uh, uh, I forgot his uh, last name but uh, his uh, breaks uh, exploding into smithereens which uh, brings back uh, flashbacks towards uh, when Sterling Marlin and Robbie Gordon's brakes were on fire in the 2004 Brickyard 400. I don't think I can I I'm not sure how many how many wreck uh, single car wrecks were even in this race like one two three four five five single car wrecks plus a uh, two a massive two huge car, huge car wrecks where uh, Cole uh, Daly, I think, was spinning out. Then Oliver Askew was trying to avoid it, then slammed the inside wall extremely hard. And then when Connor Daly initially uh, saved his car from spinning out, he uh, unfortunately hit the inside wall. Oliver Askew pretty much didn't want to rear-end any of the cars that were uh, breaking in front of him, so he decided to jerk extremely hard to the left, to the point where it pretty much uh, took him out of the race, unfortunately. Just thank goodness both of them were okay. And to really top off this one, thank goodness uh, Spencer Pickett is okay. Uh, and congratulations to uh, Takuma Sato for his second uh, Indianapolis 500. And uh, I'm still surprised that he, of all people, has been uh, really racking up his trophies. I remember how big his first victory was back in 2013 when he won at, I believe it was uh, Long Beach or... Yeah, I think it was in Long Beach. <laughs> and then how devastating it was for the IndyCar community and pretty much the whole racing community when he choked the Indianapolis 500 to one of my... Uh, past uh, favorite IndyCar driver, Dario Franchitti, in uh, 2012. And now, and now look at Takuma Sato with uh, his two Indianapolis 500 victories. He's now up, his name is now up there with the uh, Indianapolis 500 uh, multi-winner champions, which is uh, pretty neat. I remember he, when, his, uh, when his career was started from scratch. Woo! <laughs> Has he come a long way? <laughs> a lot of people can say that this uh, victory of his was fake, but um, considering that uh, Spencer Piggott was uh, helped out of the vehicle and that he wasn't in the best condition, I don't exactly th see how. Uh, even if they red flagged this race, I'm pretty sure it still would have ended under caution given the amount of pace laps they would have done. So, um, to call uh, this uh, race victory a uh, fake would also imply that Dale Earnhardt's victory from 1998 was fake. 
Howbeit, I am still not a big fan of races ending under caution, but this one just didn't bother me as much, which I, I'm not sure why, even though I'm not the most gargantuan fan of Tsuku Masato, but still. Spencer Piggott's Rex was indeed pretty serious, so I kind of could care less whether or not the race ended under caution. Anyways, the first Dover race, not much quite happened un except until the last stage where there was a lot of three wide racing towards the end. And uh, congratulations to my uh, man Jimmy Jones for acquiring se seventh place that race. And then third place on two tires. Two tires. He managed to beat all but two drivers on two tires. Wow. Where where did Jimmy Classic Jimmy come from? And how the hell is can a can a single color be this much of a difference? Remember back in 2014 when they when they switched from the white lightning to the blue paint scheme and suddenly Jimmy Johnson was doing way better in said blue paint scheme. That's exactly what's been happening with this white paint scheme. Like, what the fuck's going on? Not a single finish outside the top ten so far of those three races he's raced it. Yet, yet when he was racing the black scheme, it was only a miracle that he would finish even twelfth or eleventh. What the fuck's going on? How is it? How did? How did a dif different color? make this much of a difference it blows my mind I remember when it was the opposite cursed back in 2014 but now it, it appears that his white scheme is doing him doing him good deeds managing to hold off his teammate William Byron his competitor towards the playoffs on just two tires I I'm at a loss for words. His season is prolif proliferating ever since the opposite color of black was implemented on his ally scheme. Like, how is this possible? I just, I just don't get it. Even, even when Jimmy Johnson was slapped in the ball sack with a bullshit penalty, he managed a third place finish. What the fuck's going on? I, I'm blown away by how... How... Resilient Jimmy Johnson really has been. Like his old self from all those years ago. I... <laughs> and you know, um... To make matters even worse, Jimmy Johnson consistently, with the exception of uh, that one Dover race, has been finishing ahead of Kyle Busch a certain amount of times, too. Ever since he went to the white scheme. Two out of three of those races, he finished ahead of Kyle Busch. And Kyle Busch, for the first time, has surpassed his amount of races to win a race in a single season remaining winless to to make it sound more less ambiguous the amount of races it took Kyle Busch to win a single race was back in 2005 which was 24 and it's a now it's now officially at 25 here in 2020 wow Sometimes it's good when 2020 is worse than dog shit. Also, congratulations. Speaking of which, congratulations of uh, to uh um sorry, I'm stuttering. Let me restart that. Congratulations to uh, Kevin Harvick for uh, the not only the uh, 700th Ford win milestone, but also tying Stat Patty Bush of number of cup career wins which is 56 
Kyle Busch had all this time to make it difficult for Kevin Harvick. You can tell that Kyle Busch tried to at least <laughs> desperately win a Daytona road course, but his brakes just offed themselves. <laughs> and to make matters even worse, Kyle Busch's biggest fan brat, fat dick o fool, blocked me on Twitter when I told him that Chase Elliott had two more fans than him. <laughs> Anyways, on the quality of the racing. It wasn't the best racing, but it wasn't the worst either. It was actually exceptional quality for once, considering all those pit strategies and all those people actually not being lazy to pass other people, especially Jimmy Johnson in particular, who was hauling through the field even when he was given a penalty. That is the kind of racing that we have been requesting for years! Roughly f three exceptionally decent races in a row. And I'm not just saying this as a reflection off Jimmy Johnson. I'm saying this as a reflection off how good the 750 horsepower package is. Maybe it's maybe NASCAR. It's time to eliminate the package that takes away 200 from that said number. Just a thought, NASCAR. I've been suggesting this ad nauseum and you still continue to not fucking listen. And... It's been obvious right there, NASCAR. It's been clear, cut, and obvious that the 750 horsepower package has been objectively better in terms of competition and excitement, and you still continue to ignore it. Anyways. With all these things going exceptionally right, you know, exceptional qual racing quality Chase Elliott uh, consistently winning at least around two to three races a year um, Kyle Busch not winning a single race not hogging up another victory Have, hasn't even been relevant in the Xfinity series that much either the last time he won there he was even disqualified <sighs> And, last but not least, Jimmy Johnson uh, having his uh, performances proliferating, even getting three consecutive top tens. Top tens that aren't even watered down, like how he would finish 10th, 9th, 8th in the uh, 2019 playoffs when he wasn't even in those playoffs to begin with. This time it's 4th, 7th, and 3rd. One of those finishes being on podium on two tires, no less. I just hope Day Daytona isn't doesn't strike him with a big one. All Jimmy Johnson pretty much has to do is just play it safe and not get slapped in the nuts in the big one. He is four points below the cut line. But will he survive Daytona? Will it be enough? Jimmy Johnson essentially has been... Uh, improving his performances ever since he got the white paint scheme and his luck has been even been more consistent but at what cost at what cost will it hold up not to mention he almost got lepaged twice by <clears throat> ryan priest you're now on my shit list because of that and I don't remember the other driver, but all I remember that both of them deserve the Kevin LePage of shame title for that. If you are being dumb as fuck on the track, it doesn't matter whether you end up wrecking someone or not. You're still being a moron. If you're a moron, you're a moron. You should not be doing that stupid shit. You should not be deciding to pit at the last second or driving up the incoming traffic that is 75% faster than you. <sighs> or three times the speed as your car. My, sorry that I worded it terribly. Just these NASCAR at times, or just the idiots in NASCAR never cease to amaze me at all. So, if Jimmy Johnson makes the playoffs, 
That's some badass. That was some badass. That's some. Ba that's a badass comeback. And if he doesn't, well, he did all he could. Now, ah, who am I kidding? Some bullshit. One in a million bad luck will strike him at Daytona. Some bullshit tire violation will slap him in the nuts, or the big one will be the biggest needle needle in his ass, or uh, fuck this shit. Or some random ass mechanical failure comes out of nowhere and blows the fuck up on Jimmy Johnson, or he is leading on the final lap, then William Byron will beat him by one one thousandth of a second or he's leading on the final lap then fails to block and flips into the catch fence the first time in his career uh -huh -huh. this is jimmy johnson you're talking about who finds the most one in a million bad luck ever in his career one of the drivers that finds one in a quintillion bad luck in his career he even got fucking corona for fuck's sake can you blame me for saying any of this Anyways, to wrap this up, decent racing at both Dover races, anticlimactic for a while at the beginning of both Dover races, but then picked it themselves up towards the end. Decent racing at the Indy 500, not the best races I've ever seen, but they're definitely on the exceptional tier. So yeah, good luck to Jimmy Johnson at Daytona. May the force be with him. Always. If, if if this is gonna be a last season, make it a great one. Do what you can to satisfy the fans. Fan the flames, Jimmy. We trust you. And NASCAR, you better not do anything fucking stupid at Daytona. You better not pull bullshit penalties out of your ass. I swear. All of us are fucking watching your inconsistencies. None of us are as stupid as you think we are. Anyways, I think I pretty much dragged this video on long enough, so have a good night, everybody. Sorry if I stuttered a bit too much here and there. I'm just a bit tired, and I'm still recovering from my leg that has had this uh, big muscle uh, sprain or whatever from hiking and or biking. So, uh, hope you guys have a good night. Hope you guys have been staying safe and healthy during this pandemic. Keep... Find whatever occupation possible. Space out.